do not have one of these on there. Carbon too. This year we've been competing in the Grid Life Street Mod category. Uh, very, very tough competitive class, racing against a lot of really, really well-built cars. I'll be really honest with you, this thing has exceeded my expectations by tenfold. It's really impressive because we weren't expecting to be this competitive this early on in the process. We basically went straight out of the gate and we're challenging for wins, getting podiums. We haven't been off the podium in a single event this whole year. And that's kind of nuts that is that's really nuts well and, and if, if, if anything right now for us to get second is a disappointment that kind of shows you how how high the expectation is now for this car because it's just that good mm. it's just that easy to make that much power with and be reliable we went to pike's peak i can't remember the exact but like 5500 feet or something like that yeah and at that racetrack, everybody else was struggling. They were barely making any boost. This thing went out there, no problem. Just kept running laps. The power loss at the top is like usually like 30% on a car or something oh, yeah. like that, oh, yeah. isn't well, it? Well, like, at the top of the pike speed. At the top, we're, yeah. We're, we were running at the smaller road course, uh, well, the uh, old Roval, okay. at like kind of like the base of the mountain, still around 5,400 feet. Uh, so, so it still presented a lot of challenge and the strain on the engine package, mm -hmm. but this car was just perfect. Wow. Look right. Oh my God. Oh All we need now is a little more. Plus, uh, we'll be honest, we're running a lot of downforce, a lot of aero, so, uh, which is kind of our strong suit. But then again, the more downforce you run, the more drag you're going to inherently carry. And uh, that just hurts your top speed the more and more. So uh, this next event, we know we have a couple really stiff competitors who are, you know, who have really lightweight. This car is never going to be that lightweight. Like they're running 2,500 pounds. We're at 3,400 right now. We're going to shave a little more. So. Um, we need a little more power to try and keep up on the long straights and Road America has a lot of long straights. Mm. So we're going to have a low drag aero package, hopefully, uh, to try and bring to Road America to see how that does. And uh, this upgrade, we're really, really, we've been really looking forward to it for a long time. So. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we've been doing, one of the fabricators here has been doing development with a new turbo kit on this car. And yeah, we're, we're getting ready to swap it on to Jackie's car here and see how it does. Part of what we want to do with this kit is to make it as OEM as possible, and in doing so, we decided to use the OEM actuator. Oh, that's the stock Supra yes. actuator. Oh, look at that. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Use what you can, you know. But yeah, right now I'm just trying to get the angles of this rod correct. That way, when it actually opens, the linkage doesn't bind or do anything goofy that would cause some sort of boost issue. Yeah. While Jackie's on track or driving to get ice cream or whatever he wants to do this car. <laughs> Hi, uh, can I try the Oreo fudge brownie, please? Have a good night. Yeah, thank you. You too. Success! Yeah, it's gonna be, it's a pretty decent turbo turbo upgrade, so it's definitely going to be a big bump, though. You, yeah. you'll, you'll feel it for sure. Yeah, I've been told also it's a lot of the response, because what I feel with the POP800 is a great turbo, but once you start, like, playing with turbo sizing in a, like a fixed housing, the aerodynamics of it isn't going to be as optimized as possible because you're literally just trying to cram the biggest one in without going over the size limit, right? Correct, yeah. So uh, this thing supposedly with the new Garrett would be having a lot more response, which is kind of what I need out of the corners, punchy, yeah. to be able to have the drivability without suddenly like breaking loose, uh, to have a linear power delivery as well as a little more up top and you know, wherever we can get it.
looking car, man. Good looking car. Okay. Uh, GTRs that came straight from the dealership basically to us. Timothy Harold actually drove his a little bit longer, but when Andy Harold dropped his off, it had 20 miles on the dash. It's pretty insane. And they got torn apart immediately. Yeah, basically. We, we did uh, some developing stuff like that for dynoing, just so we can actually see if 2020s are still programmable with all the other stuff that we're going to be doing with it. But yeah, just getting basically identical builds. So yeah, it's a father and son. Yeah, father and son. Uh, they just kind of want like a excessive streetcar, but still a streetcar. I'm actually putting the trans back in Andy Harold. Uh, we had this tank out because they did some cage work to it. So we have like parachute mounts and cage work inside the car. So we want to take everything out so nothing gets melted. Um, so I put the tank back in yesterday after putting our dual brushless pump in it. Now I'm actually putting the uh, Shep trans back on the subframe so that way we can put everything back together and then shove her back in there. This is their 1K trans. It's the Shep 1K, what they offer. So it's clutches, rear diff, um, they got the T1's uh, support brace, basically to stiffen it up a bit. All right, man, we'll keep uh, getting some shots while you're finishing it up and uh, hopefully we'll get in shortly. Sweet, sounds good. Six days later. So Dorian just let me know that he's getting ready to put Andy Harold's built motor into the GTR. This is one of the father and son GTR builds. So this so this engine has our 18X kit, but now the motor is ready to go on. So everything is kind of finalized and getting finished up here. Good morning. Good morning. Should I say, yeah, it is 10 o'clock, right? Yeah. Yeah, like we were talking last time, it's our Alpha 18X kit. It's uh, the G35 1050s. Um, new turbos for Garrett. And with our prototype uh, update revision with uh, the actual compressor cover and inlet charge pipe going inside the frame rail which is really big because it offers a lot more room you don't really have to notch or really like want to worry about anything that's going to hit the frame rail but now with this new kit that we have it's all inside the frame rail stuff and it's probably the biggest kit that we offer that still lets it be able to run inside the, which is a pretty big deal yeah, it had like custom silicone, right? Like on yeah, the back. there's actually it's like a notch in this silicone the, that actually yeah. gives it some relief. I mean, we're it's putting, all made to perfectly fit. Yeah, I mean, I think in 1800 wheel crank horsepower with these turbos, I mean, that's a lot of power. Yeah. <laughs> you still be able to fit in stock locations. Yeah, and then last time too, we were talking. I was doing the uh, boost controller stuff, and I got that all plumbed in with all the AM fitting, all the nice good stuff to make sure it doesn't you know blow off or cut or anything. So that's all finished. We got anything on the car? That, yeah, uh, we, we actually about? have our big boy right here. It's our Alpha Race X intercooler. Uh, twin gear cores for each side of the you know, twin. Turbo. So, oh, so, so it's, it's actually it's two matched into one. Yep, two matched into one well together. That's why we have our both of our billet end tanks right here. This car is gonna get a uh, race uh, cooling kit. So that includes dual pass radiator, trans cooler, a second oil cooler, 
We got our wide band sensors all hooked up, dumb tubes, downpipes. I mean, we're ready to go. Put this thing back in the car.